So today we're going to have a lot of fun. It's uh, deck day. We get to begin the project by ripping off the stairs. Uh, secondly, we have to prep our surface. Because we got permission to use deck block and, and, and we don't have to dig down, we'll get into that in a little bit later, but uh, it's going to be pretty simple. We're just going to cover with landscape cloth. We're going to use some gravel to get, level off our blocks. And then uh, we'll start framing it right away. First, we got to get this off the house. This is pretty simple. Just had a few screws to rip it out of the building. Give it a good pull. <clears throat> All right, nothing too dramatic. So we're building a floating deck with a basic two-tier section with a wheelchair access ramp. Um, there's a few different elements involved in that, so what we're gonna have is a lot of blocks, a lot of posts, a lot of structure. We're gonna start off with the main section of the deck here. It's a 12 by 24. We're gonna do a box beam, so we'll show you how to do that. Then we're gonna lay our, all of our, our stringers on top of that. That'll allow us to have the deck boards coming straight off the house. Um, nice and easy installation. Uh, big space, get a few hundred square feet out of that one. And then we'll have the ramp come back and forth across there, down the back side, onto another platform next to the pool. That'll just be one step up off the, uh, the walk around. That'll give them a place to sun and tan and be out of the dirt, which is really nice. First thing we're gonna do before we put our landscape cloth down is we're gonna just kind of mark out the perimeter of our deck. Uh, we've got our plan. We just figured out our slope for our ramp, which in our area is one inch for every 10 inches. Um, so, which basically equates to 10 inches of ramp for every inch of drop. So we've just worked our math backwards and we know how many feet of ramp we need. So we don't need landscape cloth underneath the surface of the deck. Uh, we're about 46, 48 inches off the ground. We don't expect any wild weeds to germinate and come right through the floor. But uh, the other areas of the deck are going to get a little look closer to the ground. So we're going to put the cloth down just to make sure that we don't get any like hogweed or something like that and getting root and coming up through the floor. Uh, it's easier to maintain and, and when we're all done with the skirt, we won't have a lot of weeds growing up against the deck. We can maintain a little bit of gravel or something like that. Keep things real simple for maintenance. All right, limestone screening is, is just a leveling process. We're going to put about a half a bag down for each one of these blocks. We'll use a tamper and a little bit of water. Set our block on top of that. There you go. Now that'll do the job. Okay, that's just to level off the surface for us put the block. We'll put a block there as well. Because we're using a box beam construction, we have the ability to cantilever the full extent of the deck um, past the point load on the, on the post. So this is really effective. It gives you a lot of mercy when you're building. You don't have to measure things out to the, cell, the millimeter. You can be within a couple of inches of what your target is and everything will be fine. Really all we need is just the center line of this deck. We're gonna go left and right from there. Everything will overhang our box beams on each side. So this is just a tamper. You can see, because we're on clay, all I need is to try to create a level environment. So I can drop my block on the line. And there we go, that's structure. <laughs> when you're on clay, really what we're doing is creating a point load down to the clay ground. If we were to dig this out, and fill the hole with gravel, and then put our block on it, um, you would find that that hole would just be full of water all the time, every time it rained. It would actually be counterproductive because it might encourage rot if our post got down into that ground. So doing it this way ensures that uh, in the winter time, the whole deck will lift together, and in the springtime, the whole deck will settle together. So we'll do every one of our posts exactly the same, and we shouldn't have any issue. Essentially what you're looking at here is a box beam. Uh, we've just got it laid out. We still have to lift it up into position. Now, it's a great job to do as a two-man operation. If you had to do it alone, you could. The idea here is you want both of these beams to be level and level with each other so that they actually both carry weight of the load of the structure going on top. So, you know, a little bit of trial and error, you can wiggle it into place, but uh, definitely better with two people. So because we're building our deck for with wheelchair accessibility, the idea is to bring our deck surface as close to the sill plate as we can. Um, obviously, we want to have probably about an inch drop here. And then we have inch and a quarter board, and then we have five and a half inch, which is two by six lumber. So we are one inch above this line here, which is level. So we're gonna start off with the middle post. 
do that box beam first, and then we'll use longer lumber to establish our level going left and right from there. So the secret is we measured off the top of the post to the structure where we want our, our deck to be, minus the height of our two by six that goes on top. Transfer that information over to here. So what we're gonna do now is lift the post. Now, the reason this is really good as a two-man operation, Nate's gonna lift the other side at the same time because I can't just lift mine into position and put a screw in because it'll be out of level. <laughs> so if we can level the board at the same time that we put the screws in, then we can be pretty confident that we're gonna get a good result. Okay, buddy, up we go. Now I need you to hold all of that together. How? Okay. Something like that. Okay, now it's only for a few seconds. Do that. Keep it still. It's perfect. Get one up here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. So the only thing we don't have control of right now is the lateral movement. Yeah. All right? So we want to get as close as we possibly can. Once all three of them are done, we can put a stretch of board across. We can make any fine tune adjustments with that point. Then we're going to drill our holes with our half-inch galvanized bolt, nuts, washers, tighten those bad boys on. we got structure. I'm using this other piece of structural lumber to duck to level this all off. Okay, carry the weight of that for a second. Okay. Not really feeling it. Stay still. Remember, you don't want to wreck my level. It's so heavy. <laughs> we're liking that up a little bit. A little bit more. Okay. Oh my god. That's good. Just lifting that one. Lifting that one up. Okay. Okay. Yep. Keep that in position. Okay. Okay. Like, with one hand, hold this thing from falling over. With the other hand, you hold the beam. It's only 20 pounds. You'll be fine. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. All right. All right, so there's our box beam. So this is a little bit overkill for what we're doing. Usually a little bit too heavy, but we're just trying to extend the length of my level. My level is only six feet, and these posts are further apart than that, so just sticking the wood there with the level on it, now it just becomes part of the leveling system. So we can slide it around and go corner to corner and everything else, which is brilliant. So attack in a couple of screws, cross brace this bad boy. Okay, you're in charge of that one. I'll use the level over here. And when they're both level, I'll throw the other screws in. Okay. Beautiful. Cool. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other end. I'm good. I was just looking. You got it? Yeah. All right, bud. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so right now we basically got our box beams installed. This is for the upper level of the deck. Um, the deck is going to come off the door, follow an angle, kind of facing the pool. There'll be a barbecue area. And then it's going to change direction. The stairs will come off over here. So what we have is basically three big beams. That carries and transports all of our load. Once we've drilled our galvanized bolts, we're going to do two for each beam. That'll transfer approximately 6,000 pounds to the ground on each one of these beams. If they have a party that exceeds that, I want to be there. So we're not worried about it, structural speaking. Uh, the next step is just to, to cut off the excess of our 4x4 posts. So we're just going to use a sawzall with a nice long blade, get that in one swoop, and then we can start building our 2x6 platform. It's just like home construction. We're going to go with the 2x6s here, uh, every 16 inch. Uh, once this is lopped off, we'll make it in two sections. So one will go from the middle of this beam going that way, this one will go that way, plus the extension for the, the deck for the ramp. 
pretty straightforward. Um, but now it's lunch. So for more tips and tricks on how to renovate your home, make sure you subscribe to our channel at Ottawa Design and Build here on YouTube. So we got our box beams done. Structural lumber all delivered to site now. We're ready to roll. So we finished drilling a bunch of these half inch galvanized bolts in, um, lopping off the tops, creating a nice flat surface. And uh, my son Nate seems to think he knows what he's doing. He's gonna give us all a lesson on how to drill a hole. Um, so the best way to do it is just to go perpendicular. And with the, this type of drill, because we're drilling so much, you want to go an inch into the bit and then bring it back out and then back in and out and you just keep on going until you're all the way through. Go ahead. Really? Yeah? Yeah, yeah. So this might seem like it takes a little bit of extra time. Might be arduous, but it's a $30 drill bit, which is exactly the same size as our galvanized bolts. And if you go too fast, it'll shear right in half from overheating. That's why it's necessary to take it in and out and clean the wood out of, the, out of that bit as you go. Okay. It looks so majestic. <laughs> it's my job to make it look easy. <laughs> awesome. Important to note, I've seen a lot of guys mention a lot of different hardware. The reality is, is that drill bit with this nut, or sorry, nut and bolt, it is an exact fit. You have to hammer the bolt through the hole. That means it's a direct load transfer. And when we've got these boards leveled off with the screws, they're not gonna move around because we've been no extra space for that to happen. So the last thing to do to have our box beams all finished off is to lop off the top of the four x four posts. Once we get our nuts and bolts all attached, the key here is you wanna have the pedal area pushed against the wood. That reduces the vibration of the tool, so I'm not bouncing around. The blade should be longer than what you're actually cutting. You just rest them gently on the two pieces of wood, and then we turn it on and give it a rocking motion back and forth. I've found that that's most effective to keep it cutting in a straight line. Good. The last step for this is really we want to tighten these nuts. We want to create as much compression as we can so that things aren't moving around. And, oops, lefty loosey, righty tighty, isn't that what we always say, Max? Now, we're dealing with a, a softwood lumber here. So although that feels pretty tight, we're gonna go for compressed. Takes a little bit of work. All right, so once you have everything tight and you're ready to start laying your floor joist package, um, with a triple box beam like this, we're using the middle beam as kind of our midpoint. So we're going to be attaching our joists every 16 inches on center. The secret here is that we're going to offset the joists so that I can attach them to this ridge plate from each side and have one of these running down the middle. Now all of these joists will be sitting on one of these 2x10s, so that'll transfer the load, which will work out really, really well. And then so all i got to do is just mark the outside of my 16 inch on center, put an X where the wood is attached. And that represents the outside of the board. Now, in decking, it's not as important to be dead on the money with this because of the way we attach our deck boards. Since we're using the camo system, you can't even see the screws. If you're having visible screws, you really want to be meticulous with this point because with surface screws, you really, part of the aesthetics of the deck is to have them all lined up perfectly. You almost want a chalk liner or use a straight edge or something like that. Now my tape has got these little red squares on it. Brilliant for framing because that red square is every 16 inches. 
I don't have to do math or anything like that. I just look for red square and mark it, and I'm good to go. Little note, when you're working with two by six, it's one fastener for every two inches of lumber in the number. So six divided by two is three fasteners. Make sure you do it, or when your inspector comes by, he won't pass you. So for this particular project, we're using the Sienna Brown pressure treated. They still have the green on the market in certain suppliers, but this one looks a lot more like cedar. Um, it starts off brown within a week or two of fading in the sun. You'll never know the difference. So now what we're doing, we're just getting all of our joists run. Once we have our joists run and the other rim joists on, we're gonna square it off to the building. Once that's squared off, and then we can start measuring out to where our ramp locations are and cut this lumber to size according to our schematic for building a ramp off of a platform over in that corner. Okay, so now that we've got our basic structure in place, we've got this side all screwed down, we got the corners pinned. We're not too concerned about what's going on over there because that's all gonna get custom cut. We're gonna change the angle. So we're just leaving it in place, resting on the beams for now. We're gonna have a little talk with the client. We'll map out the final design in a minute. What we have to do is get this all squared off before we can measure off the rest of the deck. Because the whole deck is built off the idea that we're coming square off the wall, right down the middle, on this box beam. So the way that we measure this off, believe it or not, Nate, Yo. I need you to get in between these two joists at about, let's say, eight feet down. All right, basic triangle law. If I go three feet over and make a mark, okay. all right, behind you. Okay. Yeah, okay. Hang on. We'll go six. Okay. So basic law is three, four, five, or multiplies thereof, so we can go six, eight, and then 10. Make sense? And in this environment, that makes that perfectly square. So we mark off our six foot, we marked off our eight foot. Now Nate, the leading edge with the numbers, that corner goes on the outside part of that board. Kind of go like that way. Nate, go like sideways. Okay. Okay, okay. now look at this. I am way out of square. All right, you can see I'm about an inch shy of square. So what I do is I grab this board and I'm gonna pull it all towards me until my pencil mark and this 10 line up somewhere around here. So, we'll try that. Set it up again. Yep. Oh, only a half an inch. One more good shot. Try that. Okay. Bam. In the box beam. Nate. Take the drill and screw this joist here to the box beam on an angle over there, okay? You want to take the pencil? Like, like to toenail screw like that. There we go. Now this won't slide around out of position. This is guaranteed to be squared off the house. This is guaranteed to be straight off the house. So now the rest of our dimensions can be measured off this rim joist, okay? Okay, so now we're gonna measure for the rest of our deck. So we're gonna have the finished part of our deck finishing off the corner of the house. Um, so let's mark that. That'll be finished deck board. But I like to have all of my decks with a picture frame outside. So kind of like a nosing on a stair. So I'm gonna run back about another half an inch for nosing. And because I have a ramp, I also wanna have a, a skirt board. I wanna have all of the skirted up nice. So there's another half inch for that. So here it is, a little bit more just for a good measure. That's about the mark I want, right there. So whatever that turns out to be, that'll be the size of my deck. So I'm using the side of the building to determine my design instead of letting my design cause me all kinds of problems. Okay, there we go. So that's 95 and a quarter inches. Amazing. 95 and like legit 116. All right. Wow, 
Wow, that's actually a rain cloud. So for more tips and tricks on how to renovate your home, make sure you subscribe to our channel at Ottawa Design and Build here on YouTube. So last time we were visiting, we were working on the platform of the upper section of the deck. Um, so now this section is basically finished. We have a design element we're gonna walk through with the client with once we get the rest of the structure done. They're just gonna put a little angle on it to kind of mimic the pool. Um, it'll be nice to look for barbecue area. But basically what we've done is today we worked on the wheelchair accessibility ramp. So they have the platform there. That's what all these posts are in the background. We haven't lopped them off and finished that yet, but. Before we can finish our deck and our ramp, we really need to get this platform here finished. So right now we're laying out our landscape cloth. We've got a simple design. We're just using uh, building materials right off the shelf, 10 foot lumber, uh, 24 feet long, just a great big rectangle. We're gonna put a little bit of structural support underneath. So when it's done top and bottom, with a nice load transfer, get rid of the bounce. And then uh, we'll be able to line up for where our stairs and where our ramp ends. And uh, that should be just about it. And then we got a call for inspection. Here's the interesting thing. The city didn't want us to drill into the ground because if we went into the ground to put our piers, we had to have these 24 by 24 footings, five feet deep. It seemed excessive to dig out the entire backyard and then put all the dirt back again. So they said, well, because it's in a wheelchair ramp, we'll let you do a floating deck. So when we weighed out the options, we had about a $40,000 excavation or floating deck the clients agreed that the floating deck seemed a little bit more practical. So we're not sure why it was one extreme or the other. We kind of went from one ditch of crazy cost to the other ditch of, we'd all feel better having this in the ground, but because we're on clay, at the end of the day, we're not attaching to the house. So as long as it's a freestanding structure, being on the surface is okay with me if it's okay with the city. As my son alluded to earlier, basically what we're doing is we're making a giant wall except we're not going to lift it up into a wall. <laughs> we're going to just leave it on the ground. Um, the trick here is, that's good actually, the trick here is to just level it all off. So because we're working straight off of the deck, it's settled a little bit, we did some shimming, we have the, the rim joists there all taken care of. So here we're going to have to use a deck block because we have some nice slope on the ground. Um, we're going to use a 2 by 8 on this side because that'll actually transfer the load a lot better over a larger gap. I think that'll work pretty good there, Nate. Let's give it a shot. A little bit of trial and error here. We need to get the deck block in place. The hole is on these two cross lines. Now, now let's see what we got. So that's perfect. <laughs> okay, down a little bit. And up a hair. Stay there. Now that that's almost level, we're finding ourselves still a little bit high. So. That says I'm level. Okay, you can let it sit. So what we need is we have two of these boards. We're gonna use four deck blocks all the way across the back. All right. Um, we could maybe get away with one here, but we wanna help get rid of some of the deflection and a huge flat surface. We don't ever have the ability to crawl underneath again <laughs> once we're done. So we gotta kinda of overkill it from here. If you can grab the other deck blocks, we'll just finish leveling up all the way around the edge. Then we're ready to hang our joists. Yeah, I got a little carried away. So this is a little bit arduous and tedious. We just gotta try to get this laid out. We're gonna use joist hangers for everything. So if we can get this marked out, this would be awesome. Okay. So we need to be significantly higher. We're doing a, a ground level structure here. So now we've got an issue because the ground isn't flat. We can't just lay it on the ground. So over here at this point, um, instead of adding three or four bags of limestone screenings, we're going to just use the post in the block. We attach a couple screws, now we've got a level structure. Now in order to finish this off, it's going to be very much like the deck and the box beam structure. We'll drill a half inch hole, we've got some galvanized bolt and nut and washer assembly, and that'll transfer all the load that this is carrying into this post, through the block, through this, onto the clay, and now we're structurally solid. So just to reiterate, for all of you folks who are watching this video and haven't seen video number one in this series, this landscape cloth is a contractor grade, it's a 25, 30 year product. 
We overlap all of our seams four to five inches. We're gonna be covering up all of these seams in gravel just to help keep the promotion of anything foliage-wise underneath from happening. Uh, we don't want plants growing through the deck, and this is such a low-laying deck that just about anything would grow through here. Uh, right now I'm just putting a bolt into this uh, four by four, two by eight, just so we can get some concrete structure. You got much better at that since I saw you last. <laughs> Thank you. Practice makes perfect. So I just tighten this by hand, and then I grab a wrench, and then I just make sure that I take this washer and kind of seep it into this wood to make sure that it's not going anywhere. So when you're doing your structure and we're leveling things off, we're throwing a quick screw in, the screw is just there to set the wood until such time that you drill the hole and put in galvanized bolt. Screws are really brutal for structural strength. Their shear strength is almost non-existent. It's 50 to 70 pounds a screw. It's not that great. Um, so when you're building a structure like this, you, you generally use nails anywhere where it's got a hold weight from shearing off. So here, for instance, we know we, we temporarily set a screw, then we use a bolt, but up top we're using screws because every piece of lumber here is overhanging structural lumber that's bolted into the four x four. Nothing here is gonna be bending. Anywhere where you're gonna have bending, like with this platform here, you've gotta use nails or structural screws, which is a totally different product, uh, which we're gonna be using today. But uh, in most deck scenarios, you're gonna use a nail gun and you wanna use nail fasteners. But because of the box beam, this is one of the reasons why we did it. Anybody can use this at home. You don't need power equipment. You don't need an air gun, just a screw gun. But make sure that you have a box beam with galvanized bolts. That's your structure. You've got to have your joists overlapping that so that it carries the weight directly. And you don't have to worry about which fastener you use. So right now, I'm just putting these joists in position, setting it with a screw. We're going to actually attach the joist hangers after we're done setting all this up. Screws aren't going to be the final thing carrying the load, so not to be concerned. But this is really fast, and then if we run into any problems, it's a lot easier to undo a couple of screws and move the joist package out of the way. There we go. Uh, right now, I'm just putting these, uh, what are these called again? Joist hangers. Joist hangers. I love it. <laughs> I'm putting these joist hangers uh, just on the top of the wood so when I go by and I screw them in, it's really easy just to go from here, flip them upside down, put the wood inside, and then screw them in simultaneously. It should be pretty quick and fast. And then that's it. Okay, tough guy. Now you've learned the hard way. Well, the weather's a lot better than it was the last couple days, eh, Max? Maybe this will make up for my uh, mistakes last time on camera. These are the Simpson Strong Tie Structural Screw. So traditionally, people have had this attitude, you gotta use nails. But Simpson came up with this screw version for this purpose. Uh, it's very strong steel. This stuff has a shear strength that equivalent to the nail, but you can see by the speed that he's putting this in, just about anybody could install it. And it doesn't matter how good you are with a hammer. It was definitely, definitely not a shout out. <laughs> you missed your opportunity. That, that is coming on, that boat has sailed, man. So for more tips and tricks on how to renovate your home, make sure you subscribe to our channel at Ottawa Design and Build here on YouTube. Okay, so today we're taking tackling the, uh, the deck boards for the lower section of our deck. This is just a uh, uh, ground level platform. Um, in the terms of this city, anything that's less than 24 inches is a ground level platform. There's no building code for it. Uh, they just want to make sure that it's uh, uh, not going to fall apart, which is our goal as well. So they're very happy with what we have here. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our five quarter pressure treated lumber by six. This is the dimensional lumber we're going to use. Uh, you have the option to use uh, two by six or two by eights if you really choose to. The reason we're going with this lumber is A, it's economical. B, we're using our camo screw system. And so we're going to be coming in from the sides. Uh, we're every 16 inches on center. 
This is more than strong enough. Uh, we're not going to have any issues with it feeling too lightweight or too much movement. We've uh, added some structural support underneath the deck to keep the floor joists from moving around and transfer some load so it'll feel really stable. The blocking we've got in place here is because we're going to picture frame our deck. Okay, so we're going to have our deck board overhang and I need wood underneath here so I can attach my camo screws. Um, not so much for the picture frame, but doing a fish bone. So these deck boards will be on an angle. You, know, you can't finish a deck like this, obviously. So what we're going to do is we're going to come to here, we'll screw at these two points, and then when it's all finished, we'll take our saw and we'll cut our line, and then we'll add this board on as a cap, so that when you're looking at the deck, all you'll see is the skirt board, the finished edge of this board, and you won't see any cuts. That'll give it a clean, nice look. We'll be able to give it a quick sand before we put the cap on and then we won't have any splinters for people in the bare foot. So when you're working like this and you're going to do a fishbone plus picture frame, two things you need to know. One, when you frame something, no matter how square you make it, after the drying process, it is not square. It'll be close. The wood we're putting on won't be square. It'll be close. So if you cut all your lumber in advance and put 45 degree angles and you measure off your marked 45 degree line, you'll find is that over time, when, when you get to the end, all of these angles, they're not gonna be perfectly lined up. They're gonna have different spacing. You're not gonna make it perfect. So the only way to do this and have perfect cuts is to lay the boards first and then cut after the fact. So what we're doing is we've measured off four and a quarter inches, which is um, significantly less than the board so that I have a nice over, overhang. And you can see this middle board here, it's two by six but it's pretty much the same dimension as the, spline, you know, the spine of the fish bone. So our board is gonna go like this down the middle. All right, and this is so that all of the cutoff ends have something to, to rest on. So what we're gonna do is, Nate's gonna help me put this position. I've marked this corner right here so that when I'm finished, that'll be my cut. It'll look like a perfect 45. And the next board will come right off of this corner and that'll look really nice. We don't want to start here where we're cutting in two different directions. That'll just look like it wasn't very well thought out. And Nate, I want you to take the same corner on your edge and slide it over to the edge of the ridge board. Okay. Now that is not 45 degrees. 42, 41, doesn't really matter. Because at the end of the day, when we do all of our cuts, it'll look beautiful, it'll be intentional, the spacing will be nice. And that is the look we're going for. So we are going to take our camo screws. And remember, we're going to be cutting pieces off. There's no sense putting a screw where it's going to get cut off. So we'll put in our camo screw system. Remember, this is going in on an angle. If I start too close to this board here, I'll actually come and I'll miss it on, on the underside. So go towards the lead edge of the, of the board so you know you're going to get lots of good contact there and you're a little bit away from where the saw cut's gonna be. And you drive that drill bit right into the cradle. And that sets the perfect depth every time. Now move the gun up a few inches because now I'm trying to hit the same joist, but from the other side. All right, so we're gonna slide down here. Same thing. Set that up so you'll get good contact. Set the screw, drive until you hit the ridge on the bit. Readjust. Now this moves relatively quickly for something that's as complicated as this. You'll see that this is not as fast as doing surface screws. The advantage to this type of system, look at where the hole is just underneath the rounded edge of the board. This is where it gets fun. Um, where do you want me to line it up? Now. Just with that? Yeah, you see this one? This one has to be on that pencil line. Four and a quarter, mm -hmm. right? So what we're gonna do from now on is we're gonna set these boards with that touching the edge of that rim joist. Every so that single we'll, time. We'll, have, we'll, gu we'll guarantee ourselves a nice cutoff everywhere we go. So the next piece is gonna be the exact same, but like that? You got it. So we talked about this before, that the gun itself, now becomes the spacer. That's the gap that goes between every board. So we set that in. 
okay? So when I set the screw on an angle, generally when you screw things on an angle, it has a, a pulling force. But because you have a spacer, there's nowhere for it to pull to. It'll just drive straight down, guarantee that space. You drive that back in this side. Guaranteed to be perfect every time. <laughs> Compared to other systems that have no screws on the surface, it's incredibly fast. Traditionally, you had to put in brackets attached to the joist, crawl underneath, screw from underneath. It was really time consuming and a real pain in the butt. This is uh, really fast as far as a screwless system. As far as just getting the deck board down, it'll run you twice as long as traditional screws. Um, if you're one of those guys that likes to just use an air nailer on a compressor, that's obviously the fastest way to deck it, put decking on, but not very pretty. This is amazing. Now, as far as performance, this will outperform any screw or nail on the market. It'll help your wood last twice as long. I think that's a conservative estimate. And so, for that reason alone, it's worth the extra time. If your wood lasts twice as long and it takes 50% as long to put the boards on, you're way ahead because you don't have to rebuild the deck again in 20 years. In terms of functionality, this allows you to have the peace of mind to be out barefoot on your deck. It's one of the benefits of uh, composite decking is the fact that you felt comfortable to go barefoot. The trick with composite decking is in a lot of cases it gets so hot that you can't go barefoot on it anyway. So then the, the benefit that you achieve is lost in the fact that it's too hot. Where wood stays cool so you can be barefoot knowing that where you put your screws isn't causing splinters and excessive wear. And for that reason I prefer to go wood and camo. Plus, you have a lot more flexibility with wood than you do with composite, and the price is always perfect. Ah, you're like, go get the camera screws. I'm like, I can't find them. <laughs> they're like, camouflaged. Because they're camouflaged. So in this situation, the board needs a little bit of help to sit where it wants to, needs to go. So the best way to do it is put this screw through a two by four, directly underneath the lead edge, And then, with a moderate amount of pressure, you can push that board back and forth, okay? And this is gonna be reused. You can pull the screw out and set it up over and over and over again. So Nate, I'm just gonna get you to kind of hold that board in place for me as I'm coming across here. That'll keep my gap nice and consistent. Again, if you're working alone, it's something you can do on yourself. All you do is get in a position where you like it, throw a second screw in, and then you're good to go. So what do you think about working with the camo system? It's uh, easy. Yeah? Especially for a guy who's my age. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I've only been doing this for like a year. You're like a junior, junior carpenter. <laughs> <laughs> Junior's the third. <laughs> so for more tips and tricks on how to renovate your home, make sure you subscribe to our channel at Ottawa Design and Build here on YouTube. All right, so now we have the surface of our deck covered. We have to prep for our picture frame. So what we want to do is just adjust the depth of the, of the saw here. So basically you set it on there, go down until it's touching. So we're gonna measure back four and a quarter inches on the outside of the rim joist. Okay, at both ends of this structure where I have access to see the rim joist and then I'm gonna get my lovely assistant Nate to give me a hand with this come on over bud I'm cutting four and a quarter over this is five and a half in theory that gives me an inch and a quarter overhang which is perfect it gives me a nice little nosing even after the skirt boards are installed now all I do is line this up and run the full length of the
finished our cut. Now we're just gonna clean off our area. Okay, Nate, help me put that in place and we'll show you. Set it down, push it in. That's a clean line. We're in good shape there, eh? Does that seem legit? I like it. Now you can see that fence that we were working on in the background. We're almost on the neighbor's side. And now on his side, it's almost 10 feet tall because we had to build a retaining wall and we're filling in with gravel so we can extend the patio stone. But that's, that's just one side of the fence. Hopefully in a couple of days, we'll be able to finish off our side of the fence. We have a production video on that on our YouTube channel as well. Go check out the library. Don't be afraid to leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. I'm on it. Let's do it. Yeah? Yeah. As long as there's lead in this here pencil, we'll <laughs> keep going. Sounded so southern this Sweet. year. Wait. So picture framing your deck. Um, it can be pretty straightforward or it can be driving you crazy doing math. It all depends on your approach. So the way we're doing it is we're using the wood that we're going to use as the picture frame, as our guideline for um, using our pencil and our cutting line. So then any little you know, oddities in the wood, doesn't matter, it's all part of the program. So basically we've got the spline cut and put that middle board in. That's you know, the, the simple one, but the, the outside is where the miter joints are, so we've got to have a little system for this. So what we're going to do is we take our 14-foot board, which is more than enough lumber here, and we're just kicking it tight in and dropping in a screw. And after we're done, we're going to have a, a cut right in the middle, so that screw will be gone. It's just temporary. So what I'm doing now is I'm just putting on the perimeter boards. This one's done. and. We're using our square. To, we're going to eyeball, eyeball the place where we have our gap here. We're using our square, and then we're pushing this square to off to the edge of the outside edge of that board underneath. We're going to mark our line, go like that, so we know which pencil line we're dealing with. Same process, just mark your line. Go with the inside line for my cutting guy. I cut that on a square, so this is a 45 degree angle. So you can set the saw that way and just get a nice cut line on that pencil. Okay. When you're done, you'll come back. We'll transfer that line onto the boards underneath, and then we'll unscrew the boards, put those in the saw, and then we'll have a perfect miter joint. I'm gonna be cutting the wood. Uh, so we've got the compact miter saw or compound whatever. Compound miter saw, yeah. Whatever it is, compound. Um, so right now it's set at zero degrees. I don't know if you can see that or not, but uh, it's at zero degrees. Um, to get this angle right here, I'm gonna have to switch my blade to a 45. Yeah, you gotta lift the brake. It's the big black, there you go. <laughs> so now that I've set my angle to 45 degrees, I'm gonna have to cut it. Um, because you made the line so freaking thick, I don't know if it's supposed to be on the line or to the right. What do you want me to do? Um, just to the right. Just to the right. We'll leave some pencil showing. Yeah. It's easier to cut it down later than it is to have a short piece. Fair enough. Okay, so I guess I'm gonna cut it. Go ahead. Okay, so uh, now that I didn't cut all the way through, because it is a pretty wide piece of wood, I got my helper to uh, <laughs> flip it around for me. <laughs> Switch it to 45 the other way. Nope, sorry. I don't know why I did it that way, but okay. So I stay on the same angle. I just gotta line up the groove. And I just cut like that. You got it? Yep. So a lot of times we'll just flip the board over and change the angle on the saw. But in this case, Nate, I wanna make sure that the surface cut is perfect without any, you know, some fray edges on it. Yeah. So that's why I'm flipping around instead of the saw. You're dealing with things that are 14 feet long. They don't always go as planned. What do you think, Nate? We just 
take another saw blade off that and see how she looks. Yep. All right. If the cut was wrong, it's not because of me, it was because of him. Take another saw blade. Yeah? It's okay to make mistakes. The point is, is you want to make mistakes so you can shorten the wood. You don't want to have to try to stretch the wood. <laughs> there we go. All right. Don't want it to be too short, eh? Is that a perfect 45? Uh, sure. No, yeah. no, look at it. It's more like a inch, in, and it's like one degree off. Okay. So we don't want to be using this, right? This is why you try your best to make it square. But it's wood, it's wet, it dries, it twists, it moves. So when it comes to picture frame time, you want to cut this way, and you want to leave that pencil mark. Okay? Leave it? Leave the pencil mark. You're going to want to set your blade up, because it's not exactly 45, right? This one's gonna be like 45 and a half degrees. First, I want you to put that to uh, 45 and a half degrees. 45? And a half. The bottom is gonna wanna lock it 45. And a half degrees. Yep, lock it in. Okay. Now, we wanna cut this so that the pencil is left showing. Yeah. So you wanna cut, so you can see the blade on the other side. First, cut about a half inch away. So you can confirm that the angle's right. All right, okay. we'll hold it flat on the guard on the back of the saw. Now cut that bad boy and let's confirm the angle. How's that look to you? Uh, I'd say 45. Now cut just a hair to the right of that first cut line, okay? Okay, Sensei. Go. How's that one look? That looks a lot better. Okay, so let's get right up onto the pencil. Okay. So I want you to hold this joint together, and I'm gonna go down there and mark the middle of the, uh, the fishbone spline there, mm -hmm. so we can cut the edge off. So you make that absolutely perfect. So you can see when we're doing this kind of work, you can expect that you're gonna need an opportunity to make a second or third try. So this is why we're working with wood that hasn't been cut to the right length yet. And when we're working with our angles, we're on the other side of a pencil. We want to make sure we get the angle just perfect before we, you know, cut the wood and get rid of all of our options that are available. What we're going to do here, Nate, is we're going to screw this joint together. Excuse me for a second. And we're going to use traditional screws for this. We're going to get it started. I'm going to run it on reverse what I like to call cauterizing the wound. And the reason I'm using a traditional screw on the edge here is because camo screw driving straight in doesn't have a head, so it's not gonna hold anything together. Now we can throw a screw here. So when I'm screwing down my picture frame, I'm still using this kind of screw. The camo screw is marvelous. Going right into I'm gonna just go in a bit of an angle, right into my, my rim joist underneath. Then go flush, plus a quarter. Now when this wood swells up, a couple of rainstorms later, that hole will just be grown over, you'll never see it again. Well that concludes our picture frame technique for the deck. Uh, really happy with how it's going so far. I mean, it's been a long hot day today, 30 plus degrees. And uh, we've got about 170, 180 square feet of flooring down here. That's good. Um, I think overall, it's starting to come together just like I envisioned it. Uh, it's come a long way from just a, a scratch note on the pad for our permit to uh, come into life. Uh, two or three more days, we should have all of the deck surface down and then working on the railings. So we're looking forward to getting the glass up and uh, looking forward to the client coming home and see what their opinion is too. So for more tips and tricks on how to renovate your home, make sure you subscribe to our channel at Ottawa Design and Build here on YouTube. So now we've got our decking going on on one of the platforms. We've started some of the decking on our ramp, but right now we're gonna show how to do the skirt board. And of course, with any outdoor construction, there's always more than one technique, but this is a really simple one. Uh, it, 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 let me just show you so that I don't have to explain it. 
basically with your structure, we have a two by eight ridge board, okay? And then down at the bottom where we have our, we're just gonna attach a, a two by four. Real quick. The idea being, we're creating the same depth of surface at the top and at the bottom for the skirt board to be attached on. All right, now because of the kind of structure, since it's a floating deck, our block is gonna interrupt. There's only two options here when you're using a floating block. One is you attach your posts and your structure and then you build out four inches before you bring a skirt down. But what that does is it limits your structure, your four by four posts that are your handrails to being surface mount rails only. Or you'd have your deck extending almost a half a foot past where your railings are, which gets to look a little bit dumb. So what I do is I would rather sacrifice a little bit of design and have the block showing so that I have safety. Uh, I want to have these 4x4s attached at the rim joist, at the bottom, and at the top rail so that they're going to be a, a, a safety element. I don't want anybody ever falling off my deck because the screw is ripped out of the wood. So you can see here I've got, you know, 30 odd feet of ramp and platform combination. Some of it's level, some of it's angled. So when we get to the angled section, um, we have an option. We can either cut the boards in advance or we can cut them afterward. So it works either way. I'm going to show you both options. So right now we'll start with just hanging a skirt board. Now I've marked back my spot here, 16 inches, and that is the measurement, believe that or not, of three of these boards side by side by side. So that'll come right to my outside corner. So all I got to do is find my screws. All right, now I'm using, this is just a, a, it's a fence board. It's very skinny, it's five eighths by five and a half. They call it a one by six. And basically it's just for creating privacy on a fence. I'm about an inch down and an inch in on my line. Drive that inch and a quarter screw, nothing too fancy. Now you take your level. And here's the important part of doing skirt board. You would be surprised, but people can tell when they look at a skirt from a mile away if it's level or not. So we make it level. And then we're throwing a screw down here, inch over and an inch up. Now I'm screwing at these two different points here. I'm trying to help eliminate the warping that's gonna occur when this wood's drying out. Now, this wood is relatively wet. We want a little bit of air passing underneath our deck so we can install these boards nice and tight. Because in about 48 hours or so, once they've dried out, there'll be a nice little gap there for the air to pass through. So here's a little tip for you. When you're doing skirt, you can't just put the level on the first board and then install 60 or 70 boards and expect it to stay straight. It comes out of the mill, every piece of wood has got different texture and grain, holds different amounts of moisture. So they warp and bend. You want to take a level every two or three boards and just confirm that you're on track. And if you need to make any adjustments, make it now like this. Just going to add myself a 30 second of an inch. Now, when this wood dries out and the gaps appear, that won't be visible at all. But if you keep on going, and let's say you get two or three boards that are a little bit wider at the top, or they've got a bit of a, a bend and a warp, you'll end up getting a skirt that'll fan out on you. And then when people are coming up to look at your deck, they're going to visually, they're going to notice this. And the reason they notice it if you look down here, you can take the edge of this post and look down at the edge of that post and you just pass your eye along it. And they should touch top and bottom at the same time. If they don't, one of them is not level. So when you're walking into an area like this with all these square posts and beams, if something's not level, it sticks out like a sore thumb because the lines are passing at an odd rate and it's really noticeable and nobody wants to be, you know, 
Nobody wants to make junk. All right, so this is a little bit of fun for those at home who are comfortable using a skill saw. Or, yeah, we'll call it a skill saw. I'm old school. Um, basically what you need to do is you gotta set the depth of your blade so you're gonna be comfortable to cut this and not overcut it. Now, all we're gonna do is we're gonna visually keep an eye on my blade and make sure it's on the top of my rim joist. And I'm just gonna run this along and these boards are gonna topple over out of the way. And if all goes well, so that was kind of fun. That's the first time we ever filmed something and we weren't rolling. So we just demonstrated how to cut down the skirt board with the skill saw, so we're gonna do it again. <laughs> Added another board. Basically, you gotta get the guard out of the way. So if you're not comfortable using this kind of tool, then don't do this. And now, we just rest that blade on the rim joist. Start her up and off you go. All right, so fantastic. Now we're here finishing off our handrails. We have two systems on this deck. One of them is just wood, spindles. It's uh, just a matter of satisfying the code for the ramp area. And we want to minimize the amount of space it takes up and not too many design dramatic features. But uh, the system here is really simple. We framed a platform and a platform with a ramp in between. So our posts are right at the point of contact. We're gonna just mark our wood here off the post translate that slope. I think the angle is about five or six degrees. I can't remember off the top of my head. But this way, I can pass this over to Nate. He's going to cut it for me. And I'm going to have a top and bottom rail. I've already cut the heights, so that's good to go. And then I've got a top cap as well. All right, so these handrails require a banister, one of these little spindle things. Our code in our region, we can't have a gap more than three inches. So, we have to use, you know, a few hundred of these bloody things. The most time-consuming part of this job is taking all those staples out. Uh, why they put a sticker in every single piece of wood, I don't know. Then they bundle them together. <laughs> That's another video. I like to just use a spacer. That's really handy for when I'm doing something like this. That's my ba balusters that I'm using. Done. All right. Again, we want to burn that screw before we drive it so it doesn't split. Reverse. Once you see smoke, you know you're good to go. We're going to throw a screw right on the tip. This is for all the do-it-yourselfers at home. This is just a mounting screw. That's your extra pair of hands as I call it. And you can put one of those on each end, right on the tip. And then when you're done with that, you can then place your board in position. So I've got my trusty assistant, Nate, here today. But if Nate wasn't available, how in the world would you do something like this all by yourself? Well, like that. Now I don't need my assistant there anymore. Wow, that's loud. Now this one's sitting a little bit high. So I've started that screw, I'm backing this one out of the way. When I drive the screw down, the angle of that, it'll, it'll pull the two x four down the four x four post. So you can get in nice and close and watch this. I'll just, Perfect. So now we're gonna install our top cap. Uh, very important, especially in outdoor construction. This L shape is really structurally significant. When you have your wood trying to warp in two different directions at the same time, the fact that the grain is going in two different directions where we tighten them together creates enough resistance that neither of them will move. If you don't have a top cap and you put your baluster on, you're sitting here leveling and you're trying to make it all perfect. With a top cap, it's where I want it to be. Before we go crazy here, what I want to do is I want to mark my 59 and a quarter. 
That's my center mark because I measured this out already. And if I start at one end with the space and then I come across, I end up with an odd space. The space on each end is different and it's just a little space. So what I'm going to do is start in the middle and go left and right. And then the space on each end of this railing will be exactly the same. <laughs> I want to go just past the surface of the wood there, knowing that we have a three inches of wood and that screw, if I keep going, will end up in my finger. We don't want that. So for simplicity's sake, we have balusters are one and a half by one and a half inch actual dimension. So we can't go more than three inches. And if we put two of them together, maybe it is three inches, probably a little bit less. So when you're doing your balusters, keep it simple. Put two, put the third one up, and that's your spacing. All you gotta do is just drive your screw, push it on, nice and tight, maintain your level. And just like when you're doing your skirt boards, throw a lot of lawn every two or three boards just to double check, make sure things aren't going crazy. And then there's your spacing. We double checked our paperwork from our city. They gave us design specifications for what's an acceptable installation. And where we are, they want two screws in the bottom rail, one on the top. Don't ask me why, but that's what we're gonna give them. So for more tips and tricks on how to renovate your home, make sure you subscribe to our channel at Ottawa Design and Build here on YouTube. So now we're gonna deal with the stairs. Um, I would think that the stairs, technically speaking, are the most difficult element of any deck. There's a couple of cheats that you can do. Uh, I've seen a lot of people make like a, just a platform box and they deck it and they build another one and another one smaller and smaller until you get to the top. That's a lot of material, but if math is not your strong point, then, then sometimes that's just a great way to go about it. Um, you have to decide if you're going to put your skirting behind the stairs and leave them open or if you're going to use the stairs as part of the, the cover, because we're, remember, we're trying to make sure we don't get rodents and stuff living under the deck. So our skirt board is gonna come out up along the side of the stairs. So we get to measure our staircase in, right, raw frame onto decking. I prefer it this way just because I get a nice finish. So what we do, basically there's two numbers we need. The rise, which is the distance from this deck to this height of our rough structure, and the run the distance from here to the end of the stairs. Now, the run is determined by, you have a minimum width that a stair can be, okay? So it's a little bit tricky. So let's deal with the rise here first. We have a couple of code issues. Nate, I need you to hold this and tell me when you're perfectly level. So basically what we've got here, we're taking care of the two major issues that we need to know, rise and run. So Nate, let me know when we're level. Yeah, 39 and a half. We'll try this side of the staircase as well. It's good to know these things. If we built it as we're supposed to, then we will be 39 and a half. Yeah, good. Nice, we're on the money. Nice. So, 39 and a half. So, just to get the math close, 40 inches, okay? When you take a look at it this way, um, you can have a rise of eight inches, and that's our region. Make sure you check with your own code where you live. But our inch area is eight inches as a rise. That's a good rule, good rule of thumb. So as an eight inch max, that gives me five steps, five sections of rise. So I actually have four stairs. Five times I'm going up, four times I'm going across. So I'm basically 39 inches high and 40 inches out. So it's almost a 45 degree angle. That'll be very comfortable. Now, I bought this today just to demonstrate. This is something you can get at your building stores, right? And it's a great little cheat. And if I was to purchase this and install this, what I'd end up with would be an extension of my deck onto the first step. Now that's not what I'm looking for. I want to have the first step coming off down here. Okay, so that way my post on my railing system work well. If I do this, I've got all kinds of engineering issues with where my posts go and my railing. But if this works for you, then sometimes it's easier to make your deck a little bit bigger Buy one of these, buy a few of these, cut them down, stick them together, and it'll work. 
If your rise and run don't fit properly though, something like this won't work. So just a little demonstration. The higher the rise, the shorter your step away from your body, okay? So for instance, if there's just a two inch rise, you're gonna take a longer stride. And this is the way the code works. They have it organized so that the shorter the step, the deeper the step needs to be. It's like a 27 rule. It's two times your run plus your rise should equal 27. So if you only have a five inch rise, then that means five off of 27 leaves you 22. You need an 11 inch step. Simple math, and that's how you have to build your stairs. We have five rises, we have four stairs, 40 inch, we need a 10 inch step. Nice and simple. So, what we're going to do is we're going to build our own stringers because this one, although it was close, believe it or not, wasn't close enough. The length of my step was actually about a half an inch shy, so this left this useless for me today. This is my framing square. Now, I'm not a framing expert, but I have used these little things before, and these are just great little dials. They attach to the, to the square, okay? They just screw on, and you can adjust them. And the idea is, is I'm looking for, my numbers turned out to be seven and a quarter, and basically just under 10 inch, okay? So you put these on your square, and you can draw out your step. And you just bring it down to where it intersects. Now every one of your stairs is exactly the same size. Now, I'm going to use five stringers. I like my stairs to be really extra solid. I don't like weak steps. There's nothing worse than when you're going up a flight of stairs and you feel like you might fall through. So we're gonna go a little overkill. Our stairs are six feet wide. I'm going with five stringers. That should be plenty. We're gonna use solid inch and a quarter deck board on them. So when it's all screwed together, we'll have a little bit of back support and then we'll drop it into place. So what we're gonna use for this is a skill saw. We're gonna set the depth for cutting through wood. It's two inch thick. Now it's a round blade. So when I'm following my line, when I cut to the, my intersection in the pencil, it's gonna cut on a curve. I'm not gonna cut. I can come from both directions and, and the wood won't be freed up. I still have to cut it straight through. So after I'm done cutting with the skill saw, I gotta come back with a jigsaw just to finish off the cuts and that makes sure that everything is clean and square. So that is a perfect cut with the skill saw, but then you gotta follow up with the jig. You place it in the spot. It makes a perfect inside cut, nice and clean. We just do that over and over and over again with all five of our stringers, then we're ready to attach them. So now we've got all of our stair stringers tacked into place. The outside is screwed together. Um, you can see what we did is we, we continued on with our skirt look and behind where the stairs are gonna go. This is gonna be important because we're doing picture frame deck, similar to the other level. This here is gonna come out about an inch and a quarter. It will be a nosing. So this acts like its own riser. Um, I think it's just gonna give it a really nice clean look when we bring it all around. So what I gotta do here is just roll this over. Yeah. 
Now I've marked my center lines from my joist, or my stringer, sorry. Basically 18, three feet, and then 53. So what we're gonna do is just transfer those lines. Okay. Try to keep it as square as you can before you screw everything together. Now these inside stringers I've notched out the area where the 2x4 goes. And the reason for that is really just... So that we have some stability. This keeps everything from twisting side to side as it, the wood dries over time. After we're done there, we'll just do the same thing over on this side. 36 and our 53. Okay, so once you have it all assembled, we just lift it into place. I'm gonna need my drill with me here. Now, what I've done is I've pre-marked my seven and a quarter rise over here, so I know where to attach this two by four. Now I've got this corner tacked in checking my level and I want to be off just a little bit here stairs that are level are nice but stairs that have a one degree incline towards the stair is really sweet if there's ever any movement with this deck it gives me a little bit of mercy you never want to go down a set of stairs that are throwing you forward so having them leaning in a little bit it's never a problem I take out my six foot level again because the longer the better and I'm gonna basically just kick out the back or lift the front to get this in the position. Because in the same regard that you don't want to be falling away from the stairs, you don't want to feel like your stairs are throwing you to the left or to the right. Here we go. Here we go. Now we're tacked in. Check all of our stairs. But we are well within allowable limits here. Maybe come or go a sixteenth of an inch here or there. I'm going to be real pleased with that. Right, so once we have our stairs in place, it's just our basic frame. Uh, we've got it tacked in. We're going to throw a few more screws, but I'm just going to show you the rest of the components of building a staircase. So basically, you've got to put in your 4x4 post up against your stringer. And where we are, our code requires us to block both sides. Okay, so we'd have a 2x6 riser across the front. It'd be screwed in from all different directions. That means it also has to be blocked from here across, okay? And then after we're done with that, we just cut our, our floorboards, and I'm gonna go about an inch past the stringer on each side so that I can bring my skirt boards all up the sides, okay? I'll do a little back framing with some two by fours, screw the skirt in top and bottom, close off that area for animals, and then that'll be the finish. With this one here, we'll end up drawing the size of this post. We'll cut it out with a, a hole saw and a, and a jigsaw. And then we would just lift it up and slide it over our, our posts and slide it down. And that would be it. And we just stairs and risers all the way. Close it up and then we're finished. So for more tips and tricks on how to renovate your home, make sure you subscribe to our channel at Ottawa Design and Build here on YouTube. Welcome back to our deck. Today is the day of the final reveal. I'm Jeff from Ottawa Design and Build. Thanks for coming to join us today. Today we're going to go take a look at the project you've been watching unfold for the last six or seven weeks. The deck project from outside. Now the clients have wasted no time moving in. They're out enjoying a drink on it right now and rightfully so. It's a beautiful day. Here we go. So we've shown you how to build it, frame it, skirt it, board it, handrail it, but you haven't seen all the details. So come on with us for a quick check. What we have over here 
is a glass panel handrail system. Now this is kind of cool because the glass comes with an aluminum frame system and I hate those. They only get screwed to the surface so your posts aren't secured properly. And so what I asked is I got in touch with my engineer and I said, can we just do this with glass and wood? The city said no because they don't have engineering for it. But my engineer said, I like the idea, let me run the numbers. And he allowed me to actually take a dado blade, group the two by fours top and bottom, set the glass inside of it. And now we've got just glass and wood, no third element as far as material. It's a lot nicer. We've got a functioning hideaway underneath the deck. Of course, we're using a metal bracket system to guarantee the door to stay square for a lot of years to come. Nice, simple little latch, skirt board as well. Over here, we have the family outside. Say hi, guys. So this is the fishbone deck. You can see down the middle, the spline separates the boards. That gives you, you know, 240 square feet, but you don't have boards butt up joint against each other, so it doesn't look ugly. Everything on here has been camo screwed, so you can walk barefoot, and you're not gonna get the splinters in your feet. All right, so over here, we have the stairs are finished. Nice and sturdy. The only thing I haven't yet to do is I have a little bit of sanding to do. We're gonna take care of that tomorrow. But come on over here, this is a great element. This is our ramp for Keith, this is wheelchair access ramp. In our area, we have to have basically, you know, one inch of rise for every 10 inches. We made ours more like one in 12, so it's not so aggressive. It's a little easier to get up and down. So come on up, you'll see these posts. These all go through the floor, anchored at the bottom, tied again at the skirt board. This deck is as solid as a rock. There's no element to this thing that's moving even though it's a floating surface mount deck. Nothing's going into the ground here. Remember, it's all on blocks. So here we are with the ramp. It's only about 14 feet long. <laughs> Come on up for a walk. Simple design here. It's just spindles. Of course, it's every, every three inches because we have code. We can't have kids falling through the gaps. Now, we made this incredibly strong because we have a sneaky feeling that the adults are going to be using it too. <laughs> This is beautiful. All right, now you come up this way, you can see why we have the glass element. We have glass so that from the sitting area in the house here, you can look out and there's no visual impairment. So you can see all the way across the yard, everybody that you're entertaining, you can see the kids in the pool. That way the adults can be up here barbecuing or sitting down, cards, dinner, whatever. Keep an eye on the kids in the pool. Now this is the main surface of the deck. Now we're up almost five feet off the ground. That was nice and easy. And you can see the fence in the background, of course. That's all finished, it came together beautiful. I think one of the things we wanna highlight here is the glass. Now let's take a look at this. This is a tempered glass railing. The engineer has approved this so that it's just as strong as, well, let's put it this way. If you had a 400 pound man falling over and running into this, it would throw him right back onto the deck. If you did that with aluminum post and rail, it would just bend in half. Just saying, I like this a lot better. So overall, we're really stoked. We're happy, it turned out really well. All the angles are nice, the designs are well, it functions great. You have a barbecue area, you have an eating area, you have a lounging area. This area here right now probably would entertain somewhere between 40 and 50 people comfortably, which is awesome because this family needs the space. Near the end of the deck, we had this great idea. The client came to me and said, we want to get something along the other end. So what we did is we designed these built-in planters. You can see them in the distance, we've got landscape cloth in them. We actually framed them with chicken wire and landscape cloth. We're gonna fill them up with some rocks for drainage and some dirt. And next spring, they're gonna put a little vegetable garden in there at waist height. And of course, there's some flowers in there as well. Great because, you know, this house has got uh, mom and dad living in it. And so they're not able to get around as much, but this enables them to do gardening without bending over. Beautiful feature. At the end of the day, it's all about the client. You've got to listen to what they want. You've got to know what you're building and why. And then you've got to design it around their lifestyle. You can't just say to somebody, this is what I like to build, learn how to live with it. You've got to listen and build them what their dream is. So these folks, we have a wheelchair person who needs lots of room. We've got that. We've got access. We have it set up where he can get right down to the lower deck and right onto the pool surface as well if he needs to. We have a little fold-away ramp downstairs for them. We've got little kids who need lots of space to run around. We've got adults who love the sun and have friends over. So this functions for the whole family. It functions for each individual in the family. And I couldn't be any more proud. 
The only thing that I'm disappointed with is the city made us put it on the surface and didn't let us put it in the dirt. I'm not going to get involved in that discussion right now, but let's just say in the future, I'm hoping to get a little bit more reason from them. But at the end of the day, they're happy. I'm happy. I hope you're happy. It's a pleasure to share that with you. And remember, Ottawa Design and Build. Find us on YouTube.